Radio Broccoli, now officially London's number one hospital radio station. Hello, welcome to Broccoli News, Radio Broccoli's weekly show with news, interviews and information, including updates on all you need to know about what's happening in and around the hospital. I'm Alan Joyce and coming up tonight we'll be hearing the latest on the new buildings which you may have seen going up in the hospital within the RNOH and we'll be hearing from the RNOH programme manager Richard Scott and Rose Donaghy who's the training construction manager. We'll be on the building site hearing all about how the redevelopment is going. And then at 7.30 your chance to win some super Radio Broccoli goodies. Bedside Bingo will be here, David Rouch calling out the numbers. And then at 8 o'clock tonight all your choice of tunes on the Sunday request show with Keith Reeve. So stay tuned to London's longest running hospital radio station, Radio Broccoli. So if you've been around the hospital, you will have seen at last the new buildings finally going up as part of the long-awaited RNOH redevelopment. We at Radio Broccoli have been following the progress very closely and we were privileged to be offered the chance to have a tour of the building site. Our reporter Keith Reeve got changed into his hard hat and high-vis jacket and spoke to Richard Scott and Rose Donaghy. Well, the background atmosphere you can hear is our long-awaited redevelopment of the Stanmore site and advanced stages of the actual construction of our new five-storey, £40 million walled accommodation block. And I'm pleased to actually say I've been joined by uh, Richard Scott, who's the programme manager here for the RNOH, and also Rosie, who's the uh, trainee... Construction manager. Trainee construction manager. Good morning, both of you, and thank Good you for sparing the time. So I've had my uh, safety talk from Rose, who's also issued me a pair of a size 8 boots, which uh, are quite comfortable actually at the moment. Steel toe caps. Steel toe cap boots to protect... And and steel soles. Right, Okay. so I'm I'm not going to go too far wrong wearing these. And a very um, nice white hard hat to protect my bonds. Going to give it a tap. What's it say on it? Zero harm, make safety personal, which is always the the best policy, isn't it? And it's yellow. And it's yellow. And why is it yellow, Rose? Yellow's uh, for a visitor. So I'm a visitor. You guys are wearing white for yeah. obviously people that should be here. Also got my high-vis vest on, protective glasses as well, and a pair of gloves, which is going to make operating the recorder very difficult with my thumb. But we'll manage. If not, I can probably get one of you two guys to press the right button when yeah. I point at it. I'll stand in, yeah. <laughs> OK, fair <laughs> enough. I can see several layers of concrete, lots of steel safety barriers, lots of piles holding the ceiling up. At present we're just building the structure. It's a 100% concrete structure. It's a little bit of steel support that goes in later on, but basically it's concrete columns, concrete beams and a concrete slab. And they're just about to start pouring the fourth floor. And in about a month's time, they'll pour the fifth floor, which is the roof. And then the concrete will be finished uh, around about the middle to the end of June. A couple of weeks time, the walls will start going in which are plasterboard internal walls which make the building waterproof and just after that, probably in a month's time, the windows will start going in. The whole object is to make the building watertight uh, around about the end of October. Just before the rains of winter come. That's the plan. Does it have a name in modern building techniques? Uh, In situ concrete, so it's wet concrete that comes in and set off. There's no precast units. I, sometimes you make it all in a factory and bring it in solidly, but here it all, it's all coming in as wet concrete and truck mixers and it goes solid here. I've watched this over the last few weeks, months since it started. So we're in May 2017. This started last summer 2016, due for completion end of 2018. I noticed that um, there were huge columns going in with steel bars going through them and they seem to have then filled those with concrete. What are those? There were piles underneath the building because the ground's clay. And if you, did, you had weak foundations, it would sink and twist. We put piles down, which are like columns that go into the ground. And there's 300 of them underneath there, about 24, 25 metres long. And the, they take the load of the building, stabilise it, and make sure it stays where it is. Wonderful. Rose, can you tell us how many people do you have on site here at any one time? I think yesterday's count, we had 70 on site. So most of the people on site currently are doing the concrete work, fitting the rebar. We've also got the scaffolders on board now to the west elevation, uh, just around the corner. And we will be getting the cladding contractor on board soon. The M&E side of the build, that they should be starting shortly. What's uh, M&E? Sorry, mechanical and electrical. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of work around that. Things are really starting to pick up. It's kind of being quite 
nice managing just one some subcontractor, but as you can man uh, imagine, it's going to get a lot busier now. Once we get the envelope on, and then we're going to start working on the internals, and it's go, go, go. Brilliant. Now, in front of us here, towering above this five-storey, or four storeys it is now construction, we have this rather magnificent red crane, which went into sight, I think, early February, in yeah. the f fog and the mist that we had around that time. I believe it's uh, over 100 feet tall, is that right, Richard? Yeah, just over 100 feet tall, and the jib goes about 50 metres, and at the very end it'll carry about five tonnes, because it takes the big skip. You see the big blue concrete skip goes up? So they fill that up. That's got two cubic metres of concrete in it, which is five tonnes. So it'll take that at the end. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Now, the question I always ask about crane operators, how do they go to the loo? Good question. <laughs> First of all, we have a, a female crane driver here. Oh, right. Who's currently in Antigua. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so we have a stand-in. We have a stand-in, yes, called Chris, I believe. So uh, what Chris will do, he'll climb up the crane in the morning, and then he'll climb back down if he needs the toilet during his lunch break and so on. And obviously sometimes he might have to wait a little bit longer depending on deliveries, if it's a busy time of day. <laughs> but yeah, we've got all the facilities here, so we don't ask that they do anything up in the crane. So how long would the crane be on site for? I imagine it will stay here until, well, until the roof's completed. Yeah. So I suspect it will go just before Easter next year. Well, let's move on to a different location and see what we find there. Well, we've just come down a temporary set of metal stairs, so we're, we're really right into the basement of the building, I'm guessing, ground, here, ground guys. Floor. We're on the ground floor level now, and behind us is the little concrete cliff that supports the uh, outpatients department car park. Because it's a big drop, as you can see, it's seven or eight metres. We've had to support it so it doesn't fall down on the building, and we have these piles, this, which are basically 600 or two foot diameter concrete tubes they go down another 24 metres below what we can see. Wow. And they're there to support the ground. And there's about 100 of them. I think there's 73 in my memory, just under 100. Spot on. <laughs> Fantastic. That, that's an impressive bit of construction. It's all right holding that lot up. So turning back towards the building as we, we are, we're walking away from the uh, what is now the outpatients uh, car park area below the, uh, below the level of that car park. So as Richard said, we're sort of... Uh, what, 20 feet below ground level, and looking into the ground floor of the building. If I'm standing here in a year's time, what would I expect to see in this approximate location, Richard? You would see some very interesting gas boilers. We're now into one of the plant rooms, and it's full of water tanks and boilers and pumps. Now we're walking to the front of the building, on the ground floor, walking across towards where the entrance is going to be, which is the entrance is where the crossroads are, down to estates and the east-west road. Yep. And there's going to be a full high glass entrance. So glass entrance, five floors high, with a big atrium in it and a glass roof. I'll we'll make sure I don't trip up this. There we go. <laughs> Which will be the focal point of the building. And we're now, so we're now standing in the entrance foyer. And as you can see, there's no concrete in front of us. So that's all going to be glass. All that's glass. The glass roof, the glass wall, all the way down. So the case is in the middle of this open area, and there's a reception desk. And there's two retail units, a coffee shop, and a little news agents behind us. Two lifts as well. And two lifts. They're the visitors' lifts for the visitors to do up and down. We do have another five lifts, and there's three lifts at the far end of the building near the theatres, which is where we take the beds up and down and get to the other parts of the hospital. And there's two lifts over towards the spire direction, which will be used for estates and facility management to take the bins and the clothes and all the goods up, chattels up and down. So that's seven lifts in total, is that right? Yes. So these lift ways will eventually obviously have all the workings in them that the lifts need to work, I yeah. guess. And do the winches all go at the top and stuff like they used to do on the old films when they're plummeting down the lift shaft at a rapid speed? Or don't, don't, does that all change these days? Well, obviously, there's a lot of health and safety uh, sign-off before anything happens on site. We carry out risk assessments and method statements and how best to actually install the lifts. So um, I haven't seen one installed personally, so that's maybe one for you, Richard. These lifts will run like you saw in the 1950 films, yeah. a little bit more sophisticated. <laughs> but they do have wires coming from the top and bottom, and they have the wires to make it go up and down, but also they have wires as safety mechanisms as well. The other lifts you were thinking of were the ones that run on hydraulics and they basically have a big hydraulic ram in the basement and they push the lift up, but these don't, these have run on wires. Right, so where we're standing is 
going to be the official new entrance foyer of the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital here at Stanmore. That is, that's the plan at the moment. So what will go in front of the building here? Uh, okay, well, we'll walk towards the glass wall. Yep. So you walk in, and on the left here will be some glass sliding doors, which will get you into the space between the building and the road. In that space will be a little roundabout where cars delivering people and collecting people can come do a little circle, park, and collect or deliver the people. And the rest of it is landscapes, gardens, and hard places. So I'm going to turn back round and face the building now. So I'm looking up, now you mentioned this is all going to be encased in glass, and I'm looking at three virtually complete floors, and then the fourth floor is going on now, is that right? Yeah, they're just producing the fourth floor, shuttering at the moment, and during this week and the beginning of next week, they will lay the concrete floor. Uh, they lay it in three sections, and so they've laid one section, I think, and this is the second section looking at it. It's going to be done up tomorrow by the looks of it, the way it's set out. Yep, the plan is for concrete pour tomorrow and then once that's set, uh, the rebar will continue uh, on the fourth floor. Once the rebar's down, uh, then, then look into pouring the, the third um, phase of the concrete pour, if you like. So another question for somebody who doesn't understand building terms, what's a rebar? Rebar is basically a steel mesh, if you like, for one for a better word. It's um, reinforcement. Reinforcement steel, yep. basically. So uh, we can show you if you like. Okay. We, we can pop upstairs, um, pop up the uh, staircase, and we can show you exactly what it looks like. So, Let's go then. Yeah. And we will be popping upstairs very shortly to hear part two of that fascinating interview about the new rebuild here at the RNOH. Still to come, though, this evening, we have Bedside Bingo coming up in just over 15 minutes' time. Your chance to win some super Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving your bed. And then at around 8 o'clock tonight, all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show tonight with Keith Reed Here on the multi-award winning Hospital Radio Broccoli, London's official number one and London's longest running hospital radio station. Let's go back to Richard and to Rose and Keith. Right, well, I've now just walked up the temporary stairs to the top floor as it is at the moment, which is the fourth floor of the new building. So I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm now getting to know what the uh, crane driver must feel like every time they need to disappear for a comfort break. <laughs> but all I can say is, wow, what a view, because here at Stanmore, even though it's a hilly site, lots of little hills and dips and dales, we have a fantastic view looking across towards Elstree. There's a few landmarks that I can actually identify and also getting on towards Watford. Now, what have we got in front of us here, Rose? Because this is something we were talking about earlier on. That's right. In front of us, we've got the rebar all laid out, as far as your eye can see. And um, basically what's going to happen with this is later on, I'm not sure if it's today or tomorrow, we're going to be pouring the concrete and basically it will all bind together and give you the strength for the building slab, if you like. Yeah. And then, yeah, they'll carry on doing more of the same. Lots of these steel bars crisscrossing each other. They'll do more of the same heading towards the other side of the hospital towards core three. Um, and then we'll expect another pour uh, after all the rebars lay down. But here we are today. At this moment in time, there's no actual steel fixes working on it because they're all on their break. Uh, but normally you'd see about 20 people preparing the rebar. And if you look behind you, if you look down towards the, the ground, yep. um, it's a long way down. Steel there is that steel needs to be put together. And um, what they do sometimes, they, they prefab the rebar if you like so if you look down you'll see that there's what, what looks, looks like, like a toast rack it does look like a toast rack yeah but it's um full of rebar that's ready to be lifted shortly by the tower crane and that will then be one of our columns so they, they actually prefab it before um, lifting it onto the slab that will then be shuttered by if you look to your Right. I'm looking to my right where the noise is coming from. You, you can see where the red perry um, shuttering, what would you call them? It's, it's like a mould, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, just it's, 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 it's a concrete mould. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, you basically pour the concrete into that and away you go. So basically you make the framework down there, bring it up here on a winch or the crane, pull it into a mould, pour the concrete in from the top, let yeah. it set and then you've got your jelly. That's, That's it. That's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
the, the reason you steal like bottles, the reason you steal concrete mm -hmm. concrete uh, is very good at having compressive strength, but its tensile strength is hopeless. Yes, so they put yes. the steel bars in to give it tensile strength. So half the steel is there to give the structure tensile strength, and some of it's actually there to support the other bits of steel that give it tensile strength. They're just there to make it happen. So what we're looking at here on this floor level is like a matrix of steel. As, as, as Rose said earlier, it's, it's kind of knitted together with, with ties and I guess welded in places where it needs to be. They, they tie it with wire. They use fuse wire. If you look down here, yep. they, they do fuse wire. They put it around the court joints oh, yeah. and, and twist it to hold yep. it in place. Right, so I guess once the concrete's in there, it doesn't need to be held together in its, uh, Absolutely. In its form. So there's, just looking at the moment, the crane has just lifted in. Uh, what did you just call that earlier on, Rose? Uh, well, that, that is actually, what we're looking at is a wall. Uh, the rebar um, has been prefabricated um, down on ground level within the works area. Yep. Uh, and now it's just been hoisted into position. So first of all, it'll be fixed into place securely. Uh, the shuttering will go around it and then we'll pour in the concrete, let it set, and then we'll pour, um, take the shuttering away. And Bob's your uncle, you know, we've got a wall. <laughs> Can we walk across oh, the yeah. concrete to the front? Yeah, so we're now walking back along the walkway from the back of the building, stepping up onto yeah. concrete, which I guess is floor four. That's yeah. right. And uh, the guys are still obviously securing the uh, frame that they've just hoisted up on the crane. And the, the jib of the crane isn't that far away from me now. I'm on the top floor. So it's still a fantastic uh, view. And again, standing up here, well, we're going to get some fantastic views of the surrounding countryside when this is all absolutely finished. So we're now looking towards the temporary car park, or which is now the patient visitor car park, and also the estate's compound. And in the distance, as I mentioned, we have Ells Tree, bits of Shenley and bits of uh, Watford. You can see the water tower at Shenley. Yes, know that well. And you can see the parish church of uh, Elstree, the spire. Yeah, recognise that. So this is this is a great view. This is something, as I said earlier, we're not used to at Stanmore having anything that's more than one floor because we're all on ground level, even though the ground level might vary by a good few uh, feet in places. Going up several floors is, is quite a unique experience at the moment. So we're on the front sort of edge of the building here, aren't we, guys? Yeah, we are indeed. Oh, yeah. We're in uh, a four-bay bedroom. OK, so that'll be four beds with window at the end, I guess. Which opens, and two ensuite rooms. So how many people per floor will the hospital accommodate? It depends which floor you're looking at. Basically, on the adults, it's at 24, and the children and young people, it's 27. Right, so basically the hospital, I think, is gonna take about um, 140 beds, is that right? Uh, we think it's probably 125, because at the moment, the top floor, the fourth floor, the hospital are deciding, the trust are deciding uh, what to put on it. So we have 91 beds so far. If they get 25 beds on the top floor, we'll be at 120, 116 of that mark. So what else can we see here? We've got some more of these moulds that you mentioned earlier that you, you, you hold the steel frames in place to pour the concrete in between. Is that what we're seeing there? That's what we're looking at now, yeah. One other area which I think might be a good place to look is the new facilities management yard. Because okay. we can see a bird's eye view from this perspective. Yeah. Right, so we're going past various uh, hydraulic lifts and things that the guys, obviously, the guys and the girls all use to get to the higher points of where they're working. Getting towards the noisy corner where there's a Air compressor. compressor or something running. Yeah. They're putting the shuttering in for the lifts. All right, these, so this is the lift area, and they're putting what Richard just said there, and you may not have caught it, is they're putting the shuttering in for the lifts that are going to go into that uh, that lift shaft. So we're now looking over the end which is nearest the west gate of the hospital so just to our left is the aspire building in front of us is the graham hill unit and to the right of us is the patient visitor car park and if we look right down what do we see below us well that's the beginning of the fm yard and in the fm yard we'll go some diesel tanks some chillers which will cool the air conditioning air and condense and, and also get the humidity right and two generators which are a double backup in case the power goes to this building. There's a generator cuts in and can run it, but if that generator breaks down, a second generator can come in. So there's sort of three supplies of electricity for this building. Right, so FMB and facilities management. It is indeed. Which is run by our state's department. Yeah.
Right, OK. Well, that's where roughly, if, if anybody remembers what the old car park used to look like, this is roughly where the exit to that car park used to be. A- absolutely. You can see the exits where the where the gap is, where that little blue tube is. Oh, yeah. That is That was the, the old entrance exit to the car park that was here. Right, so I'm looking down on this. There's a, there's a concrete uh, sort of pen, if you like, with a, a couple of bits and pieces in it, as yet pretty empty, and uh, some big plastic tubing. What's that for? Uh, that's ductwork. You put it in the ground so you can run other cables through it safely. Right, okay. So where are we now in, in the stages of construction, Rose? So we're nearly completing the con- concrete frame. Uh, that's the plan. And as I was just discussing with Richard, uh, it's been bliss uh, in comparison to what um, it could be, you know. And um, will be. And probably might be, yeah. Well, yeah, probably will be. Uh, and so basically it's just managing all the different subcontractors and trades you know, making sure we're on programme, making sure one trade can work and, you know, work in sync together. It's also about building relationships uh, with different subcontractors because you know how it is. Um, The tower crane, for example, that could cause issues. The scaffolder might want scaffolding tubes and the other tradesman might want his plasterboard and and, and it's all of that, it's managing all of that, um, and which we do manage well. Uh, every day at three o'clock we meet with the subcontractors and we kind of digest what's happened in the day and how things can be improved so the following day we all know you know where we're going to start um, and hopefully anything you know any issues have been resolved and things like that but I would really like to think um, you know we're going to work in harmony together I really do. I believe in harmony <laughs> and I will try my best to keep the site, you know, subcontractors yeah. talking, communicating and, you know, ensuring the workers are, are um, obviously enjoy working on this project. Well, I think there's a thing here called the Stanmore spirit, which makes people work together very well in sometimes quite adverse conditions. So yeah. hopefully some of that will rub off on the people that will be working on the site here in some positive way, I hope. I hope so. Hope so. I hope so, yeah. But the classic example was Rose just chatting about. Next to this, I mentioned that the internal cladding walls are starting soon. It's called Metsec, the material. Uh, and they need a crane to get it up and down the building. About two weeks after that, the windows will start. They need a crane to get it up down the building. Meanwhile, these people who are doing the concrete frame still want the crane. So they've had the crane all to themselves for three months, and all of a sudden others are going to come along and say, I want a bit of your crane. And that's when the discussions have to take place. Yes. <laughs> so you always need a schedule, don't you, for the crane operator you, you, to know who, what to lift when, and that's right. so everybody keeps, keeps, on, uh, keeps happy. You book, generally, they, people book the crane. There's a half-hour slot and they pre-book the crane for half an hour and they have to use that half an hour. Right, and, and you've still got blocks and tackles in places, I notice, as well for various things. Is that what I'm seeing or is that something else? And not at this end, but the other end, I notice a few blocks and tackles. Or maybe it was downstairs, I can't remember now. No, you might have what looks like they're safety harnesses. Ah. Stop people walking over the edge. Right. You have a harness on yeah. and you hook a wire on it. Right. And the wire length is, ju- is just enough to get them to the edge so they can't fall over. So if they're working on an unprotected area, they have to hook onto those. Right, so basically, you know, that, that classic photograph from the 20s, 30s in New York when they were building, I think it's the Rockefeller building, yeah. but all the all the guys are sitting on the edge of a steel girder. Yeah. That's not allowed these days, no. right? Definitely, Definitely not. not. No. Definitely Absolutely. not. Absolutely. And I must just say, um, I did talk about tradesmen, but we do have tradeswomen as well. <laughs> it's very important. But well, yeah. you are one of them. Well, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, to go on and progress within the business. But um, we do welcome um, trades people from all backgrounds yeah. from yeah. all backgrounds very, and we're very keen to get apprentices on board as well so we're meeting yeah. with um, Harrow Council today actually uh, so I've got a meeting at quarter to one and we they've been dealing with a local college and um, hopefully we might be getting a few apprentices from the local college on board so that's the plan. Brilliant that's fantastic news well, we've now come uh, down to, I think this is the first floor, would that be right? Yes, we're on the first floor and we're standing on, a, we'll call it a loading bay. And so to, for the crane to get materials on the first floor, it's very difficult because there's all these other floors above it. And so what we do is we put temporary bridges out. So this is like a temporary cantilevered bridge. So the crane will drop material on it and can be taken into the, the floor. And as you can see, there's no, it's cantilevered out. And it'll take, according to the safety, according to the label on it, it'll take a three-ton load, 
comfortably. So the three of us are quite safe at the moment. I'm pleased to know that. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a very large trailer with the with the end ramp down, to put it in crude terms. So hanging, as you say, it's cantilevered out, so it looks like it's hanging in midair out the back of the building. It's, it's quite impressive. How many of these have you got? Just one at the moment, but there will be others, I'm sure. But it goes back into the building, you can see it here, and they have the hydraulic jacks. Oh, I see. And it's jacked between the floors. Yep and that's what keeps it stable and supported. So we don't want to underdo those two big screws at the top, do we, as we'll get that sinking feeling. We would indeed. It's an yeah. un unhealthy job to do that. I wouldn't do it if I was you. <laughs> I wasn't intending to. Right, OK, I did wonder, because I've seen these on the building over the last few weeks, months, and I did wonder what these were for. Now I know. So another little mystery solved. And, uh, yeah, three tonnes. That's, that's metric tonnes, of course. Absolutely. Not in the old money. So we're just walking back into the first floor underneath the uh, construction site as is lots of sounds you can hear from the uh, drilling and things that are going on on the floors above us it, it will get no noisier uh, currently uh, the workforce are on their break so um, it's actually a good time to do an interview right so we're now going down the temporary stairs at the back they're called a hacky stair hacky stair why are they called a hacky stairs that was the original trade name, it's a bit like Hoover. Right, so we're now back on ground level, so we're just uh, stepping over the rough ground, that's all it is at the moment. Lots of bits of uh, stone and rock and earth and clay, back up to a temporary step onto the base of the building, which is the ground floor. It's all gone spookily quiet, isn't it? As you said, they're on a break. Yeah. Great time to do an interview. But it's actually amazing to be walking through a building which is just being built and you can, you know, in a few years' time, we can look back on this and visualise what we're seeing then. Was it what we saw now? Does it, you know, can you relate to it? And I'm sure we will be able to. Well, a really fascinating insight to the redevelopment of the RNOH. You really felt like you were there, didn't you? Really great interview with uh, Richard Scott and Rose Donaghy. And a big thanks to Keith Reeve for putting that together as well. There you can listen to that and other previous editions of Broccoli News and Broccoli News Extra by going to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash Radio Broccoli or follow the links from our website at radiobroccoli.org. And Broccoli News Extra can be heard Mondays to Fridays at midday for another chance to hear some of our recent interviews. Up next, it is Bedside Bingo, your chance to win some super goodies with David Rouch. And then at eight tonight, all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show with Keith Reeve. Broccoli News returns at the same time next week. But from me, Alan Joyce, good night. Mm -hmm.